welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is part six and the final part of my toy sheep series. And in this video, we're going to add the final details to the sheep, the trunk, and the carpet. If you want to follow along traditionally, check out part one in this series where I have a list of all the paint, canvas, and brushes that I use. We're going to be using Infinite Painter for Android and I'm going to go ahead and start working on the trunk a little bit and I want to go ahead and just kind of use the Leo brush and finish straightening out the back edge of the trunk a little bit and straightening on the top of the trunk a little bit and you can use the straight edge tool in Infinite Painter or you can use a ruler and I also want to draw a line for the opening of the trunk here and you can use the straight edge for that again and you want to use a, a burnt umber color any kind of a dark brown color and you can use your script brush if you're following along traditionally and here I'm just working on his slippers and I want to go ahead and add the the googly frog eyes and that's just part of what makes this painting really cute is the little frog slippers that he's wearing. So I want to go ahead and take the Leo brush or the black oil brush and just add a little bit of some dark around the eyes and put in the pupils of the eyes for the frog and then use some dark green for the bottom of the slippers and add the details to the slippers and you can use hooker's green for the dark green if you're following along traditionally and you can also use thalo yellow green and then I want to go ahead and add the shadowed side to his legs and so I'm using a, a darker brown and you can use the black oil brush or the Pollock brush we just want to give a, a wool like texture here and the Pollock brush works pretty good for that and here I'm just working on the other slipper here and we still want them to look kind of fuzzy too because the slippers are fuzzy so I'm adding the soft edges on the slipper with phthalo yellow green and probably hookers green thrown together with some white acrylic gesso if you're following along with your acrylics and that will give you the light green color and then adding a little bit of hooker's green to the bottom of the slipper to make the dark shadowed look and then it's still catching a little bit of the light so you want a little bit of some light green on that slipper and just go ahead and make the edges soft because we want his slippers to be fuzzy looking and you also want to add the googly eyes on this slipper as well so you can go ahead and use your script brush if you're following along with your acrylics and just draw in the paint in the little details for the eyes there and I'm working on the the legs a little bit more just adding a little bit more detail to the hooves and just kind of refining it and making it look a little bit more detailed and then I also put the straps on the trunk and the segment that I did this with I can't seem to find I don't know if I lost it or I just forgot to record but anyway what I did was I took just a dark brown and I either used the straight line tool or I use you can use a ruler if you're doing this traditionally and just go ahead and make sure that they're parallel with the edges of the trunk and you can use a number three round if you're following along traditionally and just go ahead and put the straps in and then use a yellow ochre color or light yellow to put the brads that make it stay on the trunk there the nails whatever you would call those and just use that for the edges of the trunk too where the the leather covers the corners of it and then I went ahead and worked on the background a little bit more and that's how you kind of straighten up the edges on your trunk as you can work on the background and you try to match the colors to what you have uh, there before 
And when you're doing this digitally, it's really easy because you can just use the eyedropper tool and you get the, the right colors. But if you're following along traditionally, sometimes it's hard to mix the right color paint. So what you can do is just go ahead and get it as close as you can and then smudge it with a paper towel or your finger and then go ahead and spread some of that color out around in the painting so that it doesn't look like it's just one patch that's that color. And that way it helps it to, to have the same color throughout the whole painting. And here I'm just trying to add some shadows to the carpet and make it look a little bit uh, darkened in the corners so that we can have sort of what you call eye stoppers where it keeps the viewer's eye from wandering off on the canvas so it helps to darken the the corners and then their eye goes back to the focus of the painting which is the sheep in this case and so I'm just using the airbrush to kind of put a carpet texture there and you can use a burnt umber color if you're following along traditionally and you would use sort of a glazing technique if you're following along with your acrylics and that just is sort of a thin wash of color and you don't put a lot of paint and then here I'm adding a little bit of the purple for the shadow of the trunk and again we don't want it a very clear or defined shadow because our light is going to be a soft night light or something that you would have in a kid's room. So that's what I'm doing right there is just smudging the shadows and making them really soft. And using the airbrush gives it sort of a rough texture, kind of like a carpet in a child's room. And then here I'm also using the airbrush to put back the glow on the stars and the moon just a little bit better and over the edges of the cloud and just sort of tidying up the background mural for its final looks. And then you want to just go ahead and kind of work on the edges of the trunk on the bottom and darken it a little bit underneath to, to show the shadow. And you can use a dark purple color if you're Following along traditionally, dioxazine purple is a good color to use, maybe even ultramarine blue, just kind of one of your basic shadow colors. And then here I'm just working on the final touches for the sheep's wool, and I'm adding a little bit of some darker brown wool on the shadowed side and, and patches on his stomach just to give it sort of a three-dimensional look there. And you can add the final highlight with a really light color. And you can use a white acrylic gesso with maybe just a touch of burnt sienna if you're following along traditionally and use a dry brush technique where you don't put a lot of paint on your brush and you just kind of tap it on there and smudge it with your finger. And just kind of adding some more details to his ear, putting a little bit of shadow right there and along on his arms and under his legs, just adding the final details of the sheep, but not giving it a big sharp edge or anything because we still want the edges to look really soft. And you can also use the Harmony brushes to sort of add a little bit of texture to the trunk. And then you can just kind of smudge those and there's different kinds as you can see, you can use the, the one that has the squares in it and just kind of uh, put that on your trunk and then go back over it and smudge it. And I forgot to record that part, but I actually did that. So that gives you a little bit more texture to the trunk and gives it that burlap look that it has in the reference photo. And so I went ahead and signed my name, but as you know, that doesn't mean that I'm finished usually, that just means that I'm getting close. And so here I wanted to go ahead and adjust the opening on the trunk a little bit better and line it up more parallel with the left edge there just to make it look straighter because we want the edges to um, look parallel. This is sort of a trick that uh, Mark Kistler uses to 
uh, give the the box shape and so I just wanted to kind of make the edges parallel here and so I worked on it a little bit more and you can use the straight line tool or ruler and it doesn't have to be a real um, sharp line you can kind of smudge the edges of it just a little bit because like I said this trunk has a burlap texture on it so you kind of want to make them a little bit fuzzy looking and then here I'm just shrinking it so I can see what it looks like from a distance and if you're doing this traditionally you would step back from your painting and look and see how it looks and I decided that I needed to work a little bit more on the edges of the box and I'm using the straight line guide here and trying to keep these edges on the top parallel and make sure that they are at the same angle and you can use that straight line guide and infinite painter and that's what I'm doing here and just making sure that I I keep those parallel and when you're digitally painting it's easier to keep your original drawing now here I, I lost it because I didn't really make the original drawing as correct as I needed to but if you're doing this traditionally a lot of times you will lose your original drawing because you paint over it and so the lines and the angles will get out of whack sometimes and you have to just go back and look at them with a, a ruler or a t-square and just try to see if they're correctly lined up and if they're not then you kind of need to go back and you can use darks and lights to correct this so you would use um, the darker brown to correct the back of it and make it straighter and then use the lighter color or the highlight color that you would use on the top of the trunk to sort of straighten out the edges on the on the trunk top and that will uh, straighten up the angles of your trunk edges and then here I'm just kind of adding a little bit more shadow under the sheep and also on the trunk and just trying to get kind of the the carpety look but still show that it's a shadow there and so I'm using some of the airbrushes and some of them are more grainy than others and so you kind of want to use some of the grainy ones and you might even use the pastel tool here just to give it the carpet like texture that you want and I'm just kind of working a little bit more on the the edge of the trunk and trying to give it a sort of a grainy looking texture right there but still keep the edge and straightening up a little bit the edges on the straps and just trying to put the final touches on here and again I'm shrinking it down so I can see what else I need to do and I'm just straightening those straps again working a little bit on the leather covers that are on the back of the trunk there and just trying to get it fairly straight and and look like it's um, in perspective correctly and so I'm working a little bit more on his shoes and just going around and finding places that need just a little bit more detail and that's kind of what you have to do at the final stages and here I thought I would put the words on the trunk I don't know what it says on the top so I just made some scribbles to make it look like it says something and you could probably put anything you wanted to you could put old travel stickers on here or you could put the names on it or just anything that you think would look cute would probably work just fine I just went ahead and wrote down what was on this trunk so this is the end of my toy sheep series and I'm going to be starting a brand new series soon so hit that subscribe button if you want to see what we're going to do next and thanks everybody for watching thank you so much for your support if you have any questions or suggestions about what you would like to see me paint next leave them in the comments down below and I will catch you later